observing something where I felt like I would actually push the whole crowd towards. I could give people something that they would enjoy. Folks, we have a series on our hands, and to break it down, we got one of the best panels to ever exist that's slowly uh, taking years off my life. My name is Rich, and I'm joined by Nahaz and, and, and Kyle. Uh, so, I don't even know what you guys are doing. I, I, I said we were going to take this one. <laughs> what? Oh, father and son. Yeah, yeah, baby. It feels good. All right, so let's actually talk about the series, which also sure. feels good if you like going all the way to game three. Yeah. Once again, Alliance delivering the maximum amount of Dota in this tournament, and I love it. I, I was not ready to believe. Uh, I thought, especially after seeing the draft, after seeing how confident we've seen 33 on his bristle, bristle after seeing, I like this panel. I, this happening? is all right. Look, I, I, I honestly, I'd love to elaborate. I didn't get to watch much of the game because Rich just yelled at me for 20 minutes right after we got off camera. And then he kept making me watch videos of Conan O'Brien saying, this is a professional, it's over not, and over. actually not true, because I don't even know who Conan O'Brien is. Uh, All right, well, no, okay. But so to be serious, okay, here, 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 we're, 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 gonna be, we're gonna be very serious right now. Yes. We are All gonna right. be very serious I was about right to get into the Because office. one of the things that we do have to bring up is no matter what happens, Alliance is now in a situation where all of their series are going to be at 2-1, even if they do lose this, yeah, right? There so you go. They, they have continued to go the distance. What does that say about a team to you, Kyle? Uh, well, it means they keep fighting. I think that and they're, the they're hit or team. miss, and sometimes, and usually all within the same series. I like the draft they had this game, and partly, of course, just figuring the Haas would be wrong, which did pay off. Yes, Alan. you did. Um, but I think that they're just a better team when they can kill. And a concern I have with the Fadalina pick is that it's just too greedy in this game. We talk about an IP, how all three of their cores are effectively twos, right? And I think that this is why I don't like Ace on the Animage, and I especially don't like Fada on, say, the Lina versus a Razor, because it needs more farm to be effective. He's so squishy, and you have a 3-3 Bristleback who's top of the net worth charts for the entire early game. Not to mention a Sox Enigma. I'm, tr I'm, actually, like, I'm actually trying to tell like, a better story about this game, because I keep looking at the numbers, and I keep looking at these replays, and I think it just boils down to too many deaths on AM. I, I, sure, I, but how is he supposed to Who's making the space for him? Like, how, how, who's gonna find kills? I Man, guess. Let me Kyle, I've, I've seen, I, I, you know what? I think all of those are reasonable points. I've seen Ace play AM, and some of these deaths in these fights are just, he's, he's not in the right places. Sure. I, 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 I just, and, and I mean, you talk about seven deaths on an Animage in a game where, you know, the enemy Jug is, is farming at an elite level without a Battle Fury. I, I just, that's, it's costly. Oh, it's super costly. To that point, I think the Jug item builds from Mickey were perfect. I, I agree, I agree. The, the, it was Drums, Yasha, Maelstrom, right? So uh, Maelstrom, Optimum, Maelstrom first, Maelstrom first, Drums, Sanj, and Yasha into the Mjolnir. And I, I, well, it he just, did not go Maelstrom first. Yeah, I, well, okay, that was, sorry, my track, my app might have been, might have been down. Yeah, it's because he got rid of the Drums. Okay, okay. But the, 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 app, the, that, the like, app that I used to track on. The thing that the I liked was that anyway. he went for the Sanj and Yasha after Maelstrom, so he's optimizing his farming yeah. patterns, but you actually need move speed in this game as the Jug, and you can see why, where it allows him to play super aggressive with the Ink Swell, and there's a lack of disable, a significant lack of disable on NIP. Um, there's nothing to really provide control for the AM here. Of course, you know, you get the Enigma ulti, that's, that will be enough, but you know, right here, obviously, unfortunately, Fada just double tapping the Yul's after he already had stunned, otherwise that may have been a kill. But I think it would come down to me just more easy playmaking from Alliance. And also, like, the, the Omni Slashes from Mickey, that was one of them. There were three in this game that were just fight saving. Because I'm, I'm watching this engagement, like, how the hell does Alliance expect to win this? Storm is, like, out of man in the yep. middle of five heroes. But 
there, and there's an Omni Slash that kills three. And um, yeah, the reach advantage, the stun advantage, I think that's the key here going into this game three. I, I think that's true. And I, the more, again, the more I watch these fights, the more I realize, like, usually when you're talking about an anti-mage lineup, you associate mobility with that hero. But with the burst damage potential, uh, from with the just ma overall magic damage potential from Alliance with the tiny yeah. combo putting pressure on him, Any Mage can't move around freely in these fights. And once you once you look at the other four heroes of NIP, there's just no mobility there. They have no way to get to the Alliance back lines if Any Mage is under threat. And one of the big questions that I want to ask after watching this series. Do you want to attribute most of this to Alliance playing really well and finally having one of those series where they do really look fantastic? Or do you want to say that, say that NIP maybe did have some of these early game mistakes, have some of these mistakes? I think it's more of drafting than anything else. Okay. I think this patch specifically, it, it, teams like this, I don't feel like Nip played to their strengths. I don't like picking anti-mage drafts into Alliance. Um, if they're going to try and move towards more of playing for the late game style, I'd rather see something like a Naga that provides a ton of team fight. And I just think the squad looks better when they have more tower damage and ace on more of a mid-game centered hero. I'm, my personal jury is still out on AM. Uh, I, I still think he should be playable against Storm Spirit. I, I, I go back to one of the things we talked about. We looked up after the game one draft and said, okay, which of these lanes is Alliance gonna win? And he can't answer that question. And now all of a sudden in this game, the laning setup was a lot more solid. Jug, much more stable in lane as a carry. Any mage get, ended up got, getting thrown in this aggressive lane against the Juggernaut, which is not where he wants no. to be as a core. And that, I think, that farming, that differential between the Jug and the AM that existed, by the time AM got his Battle Fury, Jug was at like 11, going on a 12K net worth. Mm. And AM just had a really hard time, especially with some of the minor positioning errors in these fights, closing that net worth gap. I definitely do think that's a very important thing to think about. And also, we're, we're kind of at this point in the day, there are a lot of series of Dota to play out, right? Mm, yeah. So it's kind of back to back to back. We, we want to give the players a second to actually make sure that they can get everything ready before we do get into the picks and bans phase, because these guys have been playing back to back stakes very high right now. When we do get into this final game of the series, we are going to figure out the first team to make it to the major by the merit of making it to the grand final. We're going to watch a quick video right now before we do get into the picks and bands. When we get back, I got a big secret to tell you, so you don't want to go anywhere. Давай. Надевай наушники. На меня смотри. Все. Все корабль. Все. 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 Все корабль. Ничего не понял. Все. Все. Корабль. Все. Корабль. Все варстайла. Все, корабль. Все, корабль. Камень, корабль. 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 Все, корабль. Все. Все, корабль. Все, варстайла. Так, да. Понимаю. Не могу. По ни мой. По по ни мой. Не твой. По по. Поцелуй. По по. Один поцелуй. Нет. По 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 ни мою. Мой поцелуй. Третья? Нет. No fear. No fear. No fear. По слогам давай. No fear. No way. Нет. Все же дальше. Очень сложная игра. Нави. 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 Нави, Нави. Нави, Нави. Нави в финале? Нави, Нави, 
победили. Нави победить? Да. Нави победить. Нави победили. Могут победить? Нави. 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 Нави победили. Блин. Очень трудная игра. Согласен. Давай ты. На... Все, музыка закончилась. Третья нам засчитывается. Засчитывается? Да, да. Ты, я, я, я. Не. Я не ломал губами. Я не. Не понимаю. Yeah. Но Фира. Я. Я. Ты. Я. <свят> Разбил. Шмотки. Шмотки, вещи, артефакты. Б. <свят> Па. Б. П. О. Б. Б. П. Б. К. Б. Перевод. <свят> Переводчик. <свят> да? Переводчик. Б. К. Б. В. К. Д. Но... Первое слово. Почти, почти так. А, плевать. Давай следующее, да? Очень... Забавно. Что? Гонекс. Третье слово? Да, да третье. Я угадал второе, да? Нет. Нет. Так, так. Пурмен Шилд. И как мне это сказать? Пур. Пуч. Пур. Пу. Пу. Р. Тигр. Пур. Пур. Нет. По... Тигр, знаешь? Наверняка ты знаешь тигр. Я ничего не вижу. Пур. Пур. Пу. Блин, не знаю. Как тебе показать-то? Вот щит. Шар. Щит. Я в него бью. И вот это щит его в доте. У меня пур мэн шилд. Я услышал. <laughs> так ладно, э, это пур мэн шилд. Ну это очень трудно показать. Как мне объяснить? Я выиграл? Пур мэн шилд. Я не тильтую, алло. А, ты же сбил шмотку. Ну типа... Это нормально. Да. Я не тильтую, алло. Тильтую тоже трудно показать. Это чего себе. Это вообще что? БКБ в КД? Ну и пур мэн шилд тоже. Не самое простое. One more game of Dota is going to determine the first team to go to the Major. We need to give them a few seconds to get ready. And now we can jump into the draft and to actually walk you guys through it at home. We got Nahaz and Kyle. And we've seen two different games of Dota. We've seen Alliance once again getting all the way to game three. Before we see the draft, I'm going to put you guys on the spot because I know everybody in chat right now is trying to figure out who they think is going to win. Do you think that Alliance is going to be able to do it or do you think this is NIP's game? Hmm. I have to see the draft first. I think it's completely dependent on that, but I'm very confident that I will get my prediction right once I see it. Okay, uh, you know, right. I, I respect that. I respect that a lot, Kyle. Uh, now, I mean, do you feel the same way? Do you feel like a lot of the a lot of the onus is going to come from the draft? Let's not overcomplicate things. In both of the first two games, the team that's won two out of three lanes won the game. All right. I mean, simple well, as that. Simple yeah. as that. Speaking of simple. Didn't you say it's a secret? What? Yeah, no, I do. Oh. I, have, I have plenty. I have plenty. Um, I'm, we're going to get to that after we get to the draft. We have to keep everybody watching right now. I can't just uh, oh throw that God, out there. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But wow. one thing that is definitely going to, to get here before the cliffhanger is going to be that draft. And we, we've already talked about the meta that has really started to develop throughout the entirety yep. mm -hmm. uh, of the tournament. Has it stabilized yet? Do you, do you feel like the, the meta is no. something that makes sense with this new patch? What do, you, what do you think is still going on? No, I mean, just look at Wraith King, right? We're talking about, shockingly, the first couple of days of the event, Wraith King looks like he's going to be contested in every draft, and then today it's like, what? Is he still a hero? Uh, yeah. what did you, what did you, go on, please elaborate. No. Okay, fine. 
Uh, yeah, how, how do you feel about the meta, though? Uh, I think it's about peaking in the mid game, but like you need to be strong enough to find kills and take objectives without falling off as the game continues. And I think that that was what I liked about the Alliance draft and itemization that game, especially like the Bloodthorn on Koifa. Yeah. You got to a point where like, sure there's an anti mage, but the butterfly is irrelevant because he's gonna get Bloodthorn at some point and the Juggernaut Omni Slash is just eating him up. And I like what Alliance did. It was active, that's the key, where you have Tiny as well for Boxy, which I didn't really like at the onset, but thinking yeah, about it. I agree. It's arguably the hero that utilizes this like 12, 13K gold the best. Um, you have Blink, you, he went drums first. Blink, Echo, AC. Yep. Like you do so much damage and it costs you almost nothing. You're not really a target in this game because there's a Jug and a Storm to worry about and that's who Nip's gonna be gunning for most of the time. I think, that's a, I think that's a really good point, and it actually builds on one of the stats that I noticed from this oh. game. Um, Koikva actually, so we talked about the fact that Animage had seven deaths in that game, which is pretty unusual for a pro match. Um, actually, five kills and two assists on the AM were Koikva as Storm Spirit. And usually when you see that in the AM Storm matchup, it's because Storm got rolling and he got his early Orchid way before AM got Manta. Koikva didn't have Orchid in that game until 30 minutes. Yeah. He went Kaya into Bloodstone. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's really telling about so many of those fights were the boxy tiny putting pressure on the AM yeah. and the storm zipping him to finish, and, and finish him off. That's the cool thing about the lineup where they had Earth Spirit, Jug, and Tiny that could all just go full Divi. And there's nothing you can do as NIP to counter initiate, to jump the storm. They're Don't playing around their Bristleback's positioning, and that's the weakness in the draft, where they don't actually have that true initiation. It's all reactive. You have an Abaddon, you have an Enigma, you have, a, you have an AM. They're all just waiting, hoping that you'll initiate on Fada, but NIP aren't, or sorry, Alliance aren't forced to do that because they have so much jump potential. As long as they have a little bit of vision, they're gonna be able to get onto the back line. I mean, I wanna, I, I, honestly, I, I think, because I think right now, I've said this plenty of times, that we, there's still a lot of uncertainty about the meta, new patch, uh, these teams all have flaws. Remaining. I'm gonna try the following exercise. At the end of the draft, I wanna look and say, who do we believe is gonna win two out of three lanes, mm -hmm. and who do we think can run at the enemy team? And if the answer to that, to those two questions are both the same team, we pick that team. Sounds like a plan. I, I, like, honestly, I think what, everything that you just said about the meta, I think was correct. And I think it all boils down to that. Yep. So not unique to this series, but an overall assessment right now of what we have seen so far in this Star Ladder Miner. Sven going to be the first pick from Alliance. Yeah, and the first phase Viper ban once more by NAP, at least keeping that Bristleback yeah. option in play. It, I, Sven Darkseer has been, well, they banned the Darkseer themselves, but it's a staple for complexity. It's been a staple for a lot of teams. I, I like the Sven plus yeah, one. I also like the Sven. It's the same reason I like McKay's itemization in the first game. Bristleback is incredibly susceptible to being kited. And yep. Sven, just one of the better, if not the best, carry in the patch at the moment. I'm not surprised they picked that up early. They go for the Bristle anyway, but you know, with the War Cry, with the potential Sanji Nyasha build, it's very easy for the Sven to just kind of zoom in and out of the fight. I don't mind. I mean, bo both both those heroes, right? Very susceptible to being kited. So it just, who's going to end up with the yeah. disable advantage? Um, AA in the pool. I think you got to keep that in mind. Although, from what I was hearing, I think Alliance, yeah, they saw. NIP play Bristle against AA and win that game, so perhaps they don't yeah. think it's Five, as six, powerful. Three. Heroes like Necro are kind of out of the meta. Another reason we see Bristle you know, just being early picked like this by NIP, because there really isn't much Radiant other than that Viper that's a one-to-one -one counter pick that you still feel confident right. picking up early. And First round of the day. I, and then this is NIP going back to one of their stable picks. It's, uh, I believe it's their most picked, it's their most yeah. highest win here of the season. Soxa since TI 22 and 6 on this Shadow Shaman in professional really? play. Yep. Wow. Yeah, and I like it more than the Enigma, even though you know, it's just better, uh, more Radiant stable tower push, and it's just easier to play around. And there's yeah. the AA. Right. They're going to go right forward against the Bristleback. I, I, I worry about that just because um, it ended up being. I guess okay earlier on, but man, the, the early ice blasts the last time we saw Aiden on this AA were, were off. The first three or four ice blasts were whiffs, mm -hmm. and I felt like that cost Alliance in some of those early skirmish fights. Speaking Ten of whiffs, do you ever play Wiffle Ball? I, I haven't played I Wiffle Ball kid, in so dude. long. I think that'd be a lot of fun Five to do as like an esports community. I'd love to do it. Yeah, I'm down. Maybe, maybe like some BTS action, some Wiffle Ball. Pretty cool. Dire team play. BTS? What is it? 
I, I didn't. I don't know. What did, let, let's just look at the draft right now. Well, uh, what, what this is the about? second man phase, Rich. We get to relax a little bit. Should we? I tell the secret? Yeah, you should. Yeah, this is it. perfect timing. Oh, cracking the knuckles. Let's go. My, my parents weren't actually excited that I got invited to, to the event. Why not? I don't know. I, I gave them a call. Five and they were the first people I called. I said, hey, mom, dad, flying out to Ukraine to do a minor. And they were like really concerned. Oh. But I, I'm, oh. really, I'm really hoping that everybody in the chat is excited that I'm back. I, I'm still uh, trying may, to get... It may have been an unfortunate uh, phrasing there, buddy. What do you mean? Anyway. Going on to the second uh, phase I, I of the think, draft. I think everyone's glad you're here, Rich. I wouldn't be too uh, too worried about it. I'm really happy to be back. I hope that I get to come back again. Uh, it's it's uh, honestly it's it's been pretty crazy. I've said this before, but Nahas, one of the first people I ever got to watch live in an esports event. Really? Yeah. Well, so was, we set that bar. That initial bar got set real low. Well, well. It was no orbit up from there. Yeah, and then you were saying how like you weren't sure if you could handle it in broadcasting, but then you watched down and you're like, wow. If he could do it's it. It's actually not true, but I did have that <laughs> moment with another broadcaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not going to call him out. He's not dead. I'm actually, like, actually like, like, I actually totally curious. want to know who it is. Yeah, now. That's but the real story. I, I will say that the, this is, like, on the completely opposite end of the perspective. I'm going I'm to call him out right now. I'm going to give a big shout-out to, to one of my mentors, uh, Chris Puckett. When I watched Puckett one time put out an, a fire, like, it, there, there was basically a, a problem. It was an online cast, and one of the online casters lost his place in the cast Ten and I was directing because yeah. I used to work behind the camera and I told Chris that the dude lost his place Chris Dyer Bucket that he lost his back. place in uh, what do you mean lost his place it, the, the guy because they were they were casting over a pre-recorded thing online oh yeah. gosh, and gotcha. it, was, it was like a very small uh, little show match and I told Chris that the other caster had lost his place and without even thinking Puckett just goes and the clock's at 15 minutes and 41 seconds the time's ticking down and the other dude just found his place. Chris just Ten didn't even break a sweat, just instinctually fixed yeah. it. And I was like, damn, I want to be as good as Chris Puckett. And Chris is, uh, Puckett is actually the first guy that I met in the very first LAN event that I ever did. It was, I, it was not planned. Uh, it was, I got invited at the last minute, and I ended up rooming with him. And oh. he was just the most welcoming. Uh, like, I was nobody. I was at, never done an event before. And he was just, oh, let, you know, let's go get a haircut. We can go get it trimmed up. Wow. Let's go get a beer, you know, like buying me around. It just, I just felt instantly, I'll, I'll always remember that because I just felt instantly welcome. He's, one, he's one of the fathers of esports. I, I wanted to say that lightly. I'm very thankful that uh, yeah. I have him as a friend. And also, uh, I don't think I'd be here if Chris didn't, uh, didn't push me in quite a few times in my life. So big shout out to Chris. Tearing up right now. Deservedly so. Yeah, I, I don't think, it, you know, you don't ever really get a chance to like, kind of step back and actually think about the moments that led you to, to different points in your life. And, yeah. but let, let's take a chance to look at what's led us to this point in the draft. Why do we have the Spirit Breaker here in the house? <laughs> it's, uh, it, it kills the AA, <laughs> plain and simple. You find the AA, you kill the AA. That's the answer. Uh, we saw them abuse that in the first game with these uh, high-reach heroes. You had a Wisp. You had the AA. You had the Night Stalker, right? And this was something missing in that Ten last game from NIP. The, hero that provides both vision and aggression. Yeah. It's a necessary combination, especially against the way Alliance like to play Dota 2. We talked about, um, just talked about the ability to run at the opponent. Uh, I think that's relevant here. I also think when you see a Sven AA, first two, you're immediately worried about trial and potential. Sure. And Spirit Breaker is the uh, highest effective HP against physical damage at level one by far. Incredibly tanky, uh, high base armor. You know, he doesn't have to worry about getting just burned down in that lane if he's caught out of position and he makes the Rasta that much more difficult to go on. Mm. All right. Taking a look at the Alliance draft. How, how do you feel about AA overall so far in this tournament, Kyle? I actually haven't gotten to talk to you about it. I've heard from some of the other guys, but what, what's your opinion on this year? I actually think it's better as a core, personally. You get a, you're really early GPM talent and I think you're super level dependent. And the items you can buy, like I just love Atos AA so much. You set up your own cold feats. You have a built-in like thirty percent. You, you you love Atos, period. But uh, which I do not disagree with, by the way. Yeah, I just think it's just better in that regard. I I, I don't. After the change to Chilling Touch, I just feel like it's more of a core's ability. Oh, oh I, that's early. That's way. It early. is, but it's also been effective. Great synergy with the AA, and you've got to be concerned that Nip were looking to fourth pick it. 
That's the you think so? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, I I buy that argument a little more, but there's the problem. Yeah. And this now, are you thinking about? Oh, God. It's a great DC game. It is a great DC game. I I don't think I you can. Is pretty DC. I don't think you can shove the spend to three and pick the AM up against the Dusa. That sounds like a terrible idea. A hero that we haven't seen. You know what? A hero that we haven't seen at Ten all. Seconds. They got a small buff. Is a Weaver. That I still like against Medusa. Weaver and it's a bristle Rasta Spirit Breaker. Yeah, the that Rasta of really the bad, of Alan. the of those heroes, the Rasta is the one that yeah, the Rasta bothers me a lot. All yeah, right. yeah, I think you just All don't right. do enough damage personally. And then It's just Mikay's Mikay's also played the hero in the past. But that's no, uh, no, no. I'll, I, I, I'll could, retract that. You could run a I'll four Sven as well. Keep that in mind. I actually think yeah. that that'd be very effective here because the hero that has the toughest game right now is gonna be the Sven. You've got multiple methods of BKB piercing disable on NIP, and it, you're just unable to go late game against the Dusa. There is a certain point where you will just not be able to deal damage to the hero. Alternatively, Alliance could all in, get ahead early, and start crushing through the map at 20, 25 minutes. I just think that's that's tough ask. I'd rather them pick something more stable that allows them the ability to scale. That's a pretty nice way to do so. Hard counters, the Bristleback, tons of damage to these strength heroes, and actually quite good against Dusa, because if you think about it, where's the magic damage from NIP? How do you actually kill this Timbersaw right now? Boy, but you're you're setting yourself up though with this. Boxy timber is actually pretty sick. Boxy timber is actually really good, and you saw it. You saw it the other day when they had the confidence to last pick it uh, in a deciding game. I I just think I look at all three of these core heroes. All three of these core heroes need to keep farming. This is not necessarily a lineup that wants to drop everything and go fight all the time, and that's been Alliance's problem. That I I look at this lineup. If any one of these three cores, assuming Sven is indeed a core, fall behind and farm, mm. I think they're going to have a real problem making an impact in this game. I want to say right now, I want to jump back no? to one of the first things. Huh? What? Ka you just kind of made a face when I said no, that. I was, and that's I, I was just, just focused right, on the enough. draft. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to pay attention. That's fair enough, fair enough. Gather my thoughts. I, I've known Kyle long enough to know that face. That is the face of a former pro player using every single brain cell in that 200 IQ head of his to focus on the draft and figure out what's coming next. But before we do rely on Radiant Kyle's Steve supreme Steve. knowledge of Dota, which sometimes makes That's people a in the chat jealous, I want to ask Nahaz, how do you think these lineups will fare in the landing phase of the game? Because you've been putting a lot of priority on talking about that landing phase. Is anybody ahead at this moment before we see the final pick? I would lean, I guess I'd lean slightly toward Alliance. Um, I think they're gonna be, I think they're gonna end up with a really strong try lane. I think Nip has some major damage issues right now as well. Yeah. Okay. I hope, I hope this Sven is a four still. I'm just trying to think of what I want this last pick to be. They banned the monkey. Um, I, I like Anaga, but I'm not sure. I'm trying to think. You want a Naga? I wouldn't that mind. That feels it, it, super greedy. Just, I just like, eh, hey, it's true. It feels super greedy. I mean, I, I want, man. I, I want more beef. Maybe you just core the Sven. Honestly, yeah, you, just you core the Sven, the Sven and, and pick you just something pick, that you fights. pick a Taiga hero. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You just get something that Five that's got kill potential. Three. I wouldn't even mind an Earth Spirit. Hell, too, go back for the Earth Spirit. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Rubik's still on the board. Nah, I don't nah, think nah, it's nah, nearly Rubik, as good. No Rubik here. Yeah, I think you need something. I think you need damage output. You need something a little beefier too. Again, yeah. you need. I, I want to be able to they run. They don't it. have a vessel carrier right now, which would be nice. There it is. Yeah. There's your yeah, spirit. I like That's, it. That is a really and, good and draft. it's cool. Like the Sven's weakness against the Dusa is covered in a sense because now it's actually NIP. They're gonna have the damage issues. And Alliance, because they have three cores that can play independently, it, it's really cool now because you have these two supports that have super high magic damage that can make plays with any of these three cores, and you can throttle Ten NIP seconds, away from their ancient camp that they desperately need. Uh, Nip, now, Five seconds uh, you, heroes like Huskar denied you. It, no. Meepo's denied you because of the timber saw. There, there's not, uh, they're a little limited in their options here, and it's gonna be, I, I think, well, a Fada hero. But the thing you're worried about is that you get a melee lane encounter. Okay. Yeah, Select that's not bad. I like it. It's just so this a safe lane Medusa and then Fata mid Ember. Yeah, I, I, I'm just scared about their damage issues. Too, again, again, you, 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 go back, go back to what we said at the beginning of the draft. I think Alliance can win two out of three lanes. Yeah. And if we get to the mid game and we're running at people, I want the five heroes for Alliance. I, I think Tiger's Earth Spirit is sick. And I, the thing is, it, this whole game is on Fada. The entire game is on Fada's Ember Spirit. 
Uh, how does he play around the Spirit Breaker? Does he make enough space for his two beefy cores and kind of just stabilize, get them to the mid game safe and sound? I don't think you can kill the Timber Saw. Timber's I'm yeah. good against it, but once he gets Lotus Orb, like. I'm he's pretty just, surprised. He's unkillable. I think overall for the tournament, Peters had the best of most of these drafts, but I think this is a draft where if Alliance plays Queen Dota, yeah. their path to victory is easier. I would agree. I, I, I will ah, say, I, I, I actually do want to bring up one point here because you said that after you saw the draft, you were going to be just so confident in it's how true. it was going to play out. Oof. And now I feel like we have a draft where maybe you don't feel that way necessarily with the prediction. It, it's the most even draft. Okay. And, yeah. You know, it... And that's like I, no flame. I, I just think that it's interesting that we end up seeing a draft that looks this even. Yeah, I, I, I favor Alliance. I think that they should win this game, but they have to play clean. You know, one or two mistakes around the Roche yeah. pit, you know, Sven will fall off. A level 20, 25 Dusa with that third, fourth item, the tide will start to turn. Bristles, or sorry, Timbersaw is unkillable for the first 25 minutes, but, you know, will Nip just spread the map, outplay, and just... I love the Earth Spirit. I, I think Alliance has got it. I'm going to go with them. All right. Well, you heard the predictions from the panel, but one thing, it doesn't matter which way the predictions actually do go. You just know that there is just so much pressure. This game can be the one that sends you all the way to the major. You need to play clean Dota. And if you want to play with clean numbers, you should use SAP's numbers. They are our analytical partner throughout the entirety of the event. But let's find out who's going to be the first team that goes to the major. It really is one of the biggest questions. Can a team play clean Dota? Can they clean. execute the draft they've got? And is clean really the word we want to use? Ease uh, of execution. Real smooth Dota. Uh -huh. Nice and easy. So you're going to drop your voice a little low while you Real do that. Real smooth Dota. Okay, I feel like having a beer now for some reason. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm also leaning towards Alliance. I like the draft. They have comfort picks. Mm -hmm. Tiger Earth Spirit has been consistently banned out against them in other tw teams. NIP yep. has been content letting it go through. Yep. I think they have what it takes to possibly make it to the major. Yeah, maybe. That's all they need to do. Win this one game and you punch your ticket to Moscow. That's, uh, that's what they want to have. But at the same time, like I just love this little bit of a tussle between the mid lanes. Like having Ember versus now Storm Spirit, Koi for versus Fada. So my eyes have just always been attracted to. Uh, how do you actually like the two of them? Like two heroes who are very global. They're, they're brothers in a way. They are. Uh, Spirit Bros. All the bros are here. Yeah, we've got, we've got the whole set. We have. Even the Breaker's here. <laughs> the Breaker of Spirits? The Breaker of Spirits. Yeah, so I, normally I, again, will lean towards it being a skill-based matchup. Uh, Storm gets a slight advantage early on because he's ranged. And then once Flame Guard comes up, then Ember Spirit gets an advantage. And then once you get the more points in Remnant and Overload, then obviously you can take off the Flame Guard. So it goes back and forth. However, I will say that Storm Spirit can rely on jungle farming much easily or he can revert to jungle farming, whereas Ember Spirit kind of needs to farm heroes yeah. early on. So, so that, that should still combo nicely with uh, the presence of Suxa. Yes, uh, that is the name. That is the name that of Suxa, who is playing the Spirit Breaker yes. in this game. Um, you better not cop out and say the Spirit Breaker goes in. I want to hear that hey, name. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just telling everyone right now, if you have massive issues it, as a caster saying the names of the players, always go for the heroes. But no, you, no, you, no. Let me, let me actually tell you why I actually stopped casting. Because when I first started casting, I'd never say the players' names. Okay. I'd always say the hero names. Uh -huh. um, and the reason why I stopped doing it was because uh, for anyone out there who doesn't know, uh, everything you ha hear in free to play, the recordings from TI1, mm -hmm. are all re recorded. Oh, they had you do like ADR or whatever? None of it is the original audio. Well, I'll be damned. And uh, the reason for this was because the codec that was being run was insanely low. I and remember. all the audio from, Dota, uh, from TI1, um, we've got time by the way because they paused because they had some issues. No, no, Toby's um, missing first blood because he wants to relive the glory days. I, no, I want to relive the glory days because that's what I was renowned for. No, this, <laughs> we, this is why we have observers and we're a professional industry now. <laughs> let's hear it, um, let's hear it. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> where, where, where were we? Uh, so yeah, we had to re-record it because the codec was so low. It was one of the early um, early versions because it was like the first time Dota 2 had ever done. Yeah, yeah. And then it started lagging as well. Um, so the way they did the streaming setup is they had us casters casting into Dota TV directly. 
that was in Cologne. Mm -hmm. The signal would then be sent to the computers that oh. were in the office of Valve in Seattle. Oh. Uh, and from there, they would take the Dota, T Dota, Dota TV audio and stream out from these PCs to the world. But of course, that audio quality was absolutely horrendous. We had a razor booth right next to us that wouldn't shut up. Um, I couldn't actually hear my co-caster for majority of the event. Uh -huh. uh, it's because it was so loud. And Tiger's going to die uh, because, well, that's five heroes and he's an ES with no ability to escape. But that gives us more time. Um, <laughs> and uh, so what ended up happening was I took a trip to Seattle. And for a week, uh, we would basically recast all the lines, and Valve was like, we want to have the players as the, as the real focus. Oh. So this is where we start this whole storyline a long time ago. Why you don't say the hero names, you say the player names. Interesting. Because the players are meant to be the focus and not the heroes. Wow, a little bit of Hollywood magic, I suppose. Yeah, another fun little uh, bit about that one. We had to re-record things time and time again. Uh, we reworked some of the some of the words as well because oh I was delusional at TI one so That's some of the cheating though you some of the stuff I said what didn't actually make total sense you can't do that I, you're rewriting history I was rewriting history but don't worry all the original vods you can actually find so if someone wants to compare the scripting uh, <laughs> you can actually go back because it's all available on the Dota two Dota two channel um, I know my weekend project now no, <laughs> I'm gonna expose you Toby <laughs> expose you for the fraud you are, you are. rewriting live commentary oh Tiger he's able to rolling boulder himself away uh, but yeah so we had to keep re-recording the story's not over yet this keeps going so this, please this, this, this is like an aha's lecture so please, it, ju game. it just never ends um so the last part of it was we had to keep re-recording every single day the same lines and every time would push me a little bit further because my voice was breaking and shattering oh. at ti so in order to actually get the same tone and infliction which comes from a very heavily worn voice wow. uh, Dude, that's method acting we right actually there. had to push it so hard that by the end of the day, I was like, there's a really low voice. Dude, this is a great fight. You are the Daniel Day Lewis of Dota casting. <laughs> and Soxa is the quintessential player. He's, 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 my, uh, he's, he's my issue word right now. I Soxa. Because I, I, I get very bad habits. But don't worry, it's not like I'm paid to do this for a living. Oh, wait. Um. Boxy. Can, can we can we please talk about the game? Sure. Sucks there is based to do a double creep skip, he but this, he'll have to just uh he can't even charge himself out. He went he went great at bash level one. So Insane is looking to body block him up to work with the creep wave, but he'll he'll be bringing this over. Support is there in the form of 33, and now he'll quill spray down the rest of it. Yeah, and then so the top what? lane, we've got the shaman laning okay. with his ember spirit as we have sent the Medusa to the mid lane. And he's going to be up against that timber saw that we have a lot of questions about. You know, yeah. Alliance have a history of picking of it. Uh, picking it. Boxy's obviously very exceptional on the hero, and NIP were lacking in magic damage before the Ember Spirit was picked up. And so that's why I'm a big fan of them going for Fada Ember as an answer to this Bristleback. But I mean, as an answer to the timber saw. But the Bristleback is answered by the timber saw as well. Well, you've actually got already a rotation from Boxy. He's coming over to try and do something about 33. So Ace can be retreating out, but 33 is the one in trouble. Sox is just around the corner, but he can't do anything. All he's got is great at bash. He can't charge or create space. So 33 after getting this great burst eight creeps from a double creep wave that was stacked up for him. Misses out and everything else. Yeah, the creeps will be coming back, though. So it's not like they're dying under his tower and he's missing out on experience. It's just going to take a long way around. And they're just going to continue messing with the creep equilibrium, which Sven doesn't necessarily need this much help. Uh, he doesn't, as, as the Timbersaw has actually gone bot. So yep. Sven's going to go top. And he's going to have his AA join him. Vortex setting up the rolling boulder, connects over on Ace, and Ace is very bone dry. He's got a fairy fire, so maybe that extra bit of life, he's already consumed it underneath the tier one tower, but Ace is in trouble. Tiger, even if he dies to this tower, he'll still be okay with this. Yeah, like, maybe, maybe not this soon, though. Like, this is going to be. Okay, I, I that's don't fine. think Medusa hit him. Otherwise, if Medusa hit him, it would have been too soon to go into oh, the tower. Okay, PPD. He's just going to go for the shackles. He needs to hold Sven in position to ensure these cool spray stacks just continue building up. And with an Angel Coup slow, Insania oh has God. also got a hard time running away. Four stacks, one more spray will do the work. And he's got him. 33, a double kill into this safe lane of NIP. Yeah, this is oftentimes whenever you don't play against a Bristle, you have to treat Goo like sticky napalm of a Batrider. If you have four stacks of sticky napalm, you never see a Sven sticking around for that. But people don't, again, people are not respecting the Bristle deck. And this may be NIP proving to the teams at Epicenter that, hey, this is a hero that you will have to be afraid of us picking. Mm -hmm. Because 33, they picked it first pick, first phase. Again, they did have the Viper and Nyx banned out. And yep. that seems to be the core concept between making this Bristleback feel successful. And Alliance did beat it last game, but They're still. going again mid. 
Vortex into Rolling Boulder is such a great combination. It's so easy to do, forcing a rotation from a Spirit Breaker. At least he's level two, so this rotation isn't as costly for NIP. Yeah, he can charge up to a different lane if he wants to, or he can yeah. try to go in on mid if he feels like it. To get back to your Bristleback point, like I'm interested to see how it develops. Like The fact that you can run this Bristleback, okay, it's working with the Shaman right now, but we were looking at like potentially Io mm -hmm. uh, being that combination with him. <laughs> Damn, Corvus is just having some good fun, but it's Fada who gets the Bounty Rune on bottom. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering like what you do with him. Keeper of the Light, one of the older combinations that used to work a lot with Bristleback. Yeah, NIP like to give it uh, a minimum investment. They don't want to like help the Bristleback too much. They just know that he'll be able to win on his own as now Ace yet again getting oh. assholed by Taiga. It is just time and time again, this Dusa. And she got sent to the mid lane to try and like, well, give her a half good game. Or maybe it's just to give 33 a really great matchup. Yeah, I think that's part of it. They they very very don't they very very don't yeah <laughs> they very very much hey, hey, don't say, want say Saksa say Saksa 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 <laughs> red letter yellow letter yeah there you go they don't want the Ember versus the Timber Cell right now and uh, if they are able to dodge that then they're willing to sacrifice anything else in the process and Medusa just seems to be getting caught in the crosshire. The five minute bounty runes will begin searing chains is available from Fada they can potentially just keep Boxy a little bit far away from the bounty rune. And as Rolling Ball to forward, Tiger tried to go for his own, but now Tiger's on the run out. Fada doesn't have the Searing Chains, will turn on the Flame Guard, look for that extra damage with the Bash from Saksa, as well as getting the, the charge through. The Bash does its work, and he's looking for a rebuttal box. He's very difficult, but with Whirling Death, he's still got it. Actually using his last bit of a physical damage hit to get a kill, not something that normally happens with a Timbersaw. But a kill is a kill. Trade is a trade. Because these strength heroes, that's so valuable. Being able to Whirling Death takes so much damage off them. It'll be an issue with Bristleback moving forward as well. And we'll see if we see some lane swaps happen yet again, as now Ember and Timber are in the same lane. They want to go for 33, but what are they going to do? Like, they have to Storm Hammer to begin this. So then Rolling Boulder in, get the chain stuns out. Bristleback turns his back finally, and they're just moving to get in front of him. 33 with Stick Charge, got a lot more life. He's got a salve available, Bottle Charging through this, and oh they're starting God. to stack up into the trees. Fighter in the meantime, oh actually able to get a killing spree. 33 will turn around to get the kill on oh Tiger. He'll get the double kill out of it. That is not what they had planned. That is tip worthy 100%. <laughs> You think you're strong enough to battle a Bristleback, and you think wrong. He had the salve, he had the ball charges, stagger them perfectly in between the attacks and all these passive cool sprays. The AoE is gigantic, and it will hit you through fog as well. So AA comes in, he's like, I'll just get one right click. He's just one right click away. Well, he's always one right click away until you die. And I now think Insania. they're hoping for a crack at mid. Observer and Sentry Fresh get planted down, but uh, Tiger's actually moving in. Here's your ball lightning. I'll go for a cold feet, rolling boulder, a little bit short this time around, so Ace can get up to help PBD in the neighborhood. Who's he gonna control with the Searing Chains and the Shackles? They're keeping the Deucer oh, alive. The one shot is up, Tiger. He's really committing so heavily for this, but it's too deep, and the 17% connects. And Fado wants a little bit more, but I don't think he's gonna dive too much on the tower. He's, he's got Searing there. Chains, connects on the creep as well, but Those yeah, you're charges. in a little too deep. Now Boxy getting hassled by this Bristleback, hasn't tanked very much to get too many reactive armor stacks. He's chains back off cooldown, so at least he can jump away. 33, don't want to go too deeper. Hit by the Whirling Death, long jump forward. 33's not as strong as he was. And that's a big kill for Koi for the claim. 350 gold for him, ending the four times killing spree. Yeah, both teams kind of pushing the limits a little bit more than what's necessary. Although Alliance only ended up losing the Earth Spirit in the mid lane, which is not that expensive compared to 33's of Bristleback going down. And yet again, giving kills to Koikfa, who was so good in that last game. Mm -hmm. And such a big hero as well to get those kills onto. It's a hero that needs to have that momentum. And uh, three kills out of the five that Alliance have claimed do belong to Koikfa. And we're looking for more. Tiger's rotating over, but a good Dire Observer what defensively planted from NIP. No more surprises. But considering he's rolling bolted in from that exact angle three times already, <laughs> um, and now because he's gone in deeper, he's planted his own Observer Ward. Spirit Breaker's gonna find him. Earth Spirit rolling boulders out. Uh, there wasn't a quick charge. So he's away to safety, but that should flag that he did something because he walked over with an Observer Ward and he walks back without one. He's been mixing up the spots though, him and PPD, like if you, uh, oftentimes teams do watch the replays and we did have a break in between this game two and game three. So you have time to watch the replays and be like, where were all those wards? As now Koifer gets hexed up. Yeah, speaking of PPD, there's a little bit of trouble. Koifer as well as Tiger, <laughs> that it help out, but Koifer basically does it by himself. 
So even in between these series, they're mixing up their ward locations. Previously, we saw it near the stairs, uh, the Radiant placing that Dire Observer, or Radiant placing that ward in the Dire Jungle, whereas oh, here... Charge coming bottom lane. It's more near the Shrine. Farda was just pushing the lane. I don't know if this is really going to pay off. Shaman's rotating down here as well. Farda, he doesn't have Searing Chains, and Mikkei is already TPing away to safety. So they just... Oh, actually, he went back to the Shrine. Triggers it quickly. They have the Dire Observe War for NIP up on that hillside, so they have very good information of what's here. And that's why Searing Chains, Hex, not the greatest chaining of abilities, but the God Strength. In comes Tiger, oh in through the rear, a perfect double silence, and this is problematic to say the least. PPD will die, and NIP. Sucks are able just to jump himself away. The chase! Oh, the oh he attacks. caught him! Just enough mana coin for calculated perfect! Man, that's a higher IQ than Kyle to get that perfect positioning. Quinfa in hot pursuit, great chase down on Sox's Spirit Breaker. Man, that is not easy to do <laughs> at all. He actually triggered, I think, he switched to Intel Treads, triggered the stick yeah, charges so. before the jump happened to make sure he would have enough for the jump and still have a Vortex to cancel the charge. And his positioning for it was even better because he could have potentially got Bash as he come out. Right. No, he's been, he's been on point this Storm Spirit. Here we go, let's watch it again. Charge in, right behind him, catch him at max range. And he had 50 mana left. What a player. Meanwhile, we'll come back live. Ancient Apparition caught out, BPD holds him in position. As Ember Spirit, cold feet it up, just buys more space to retreat while up on top. Once again, 33 being hunted down. And we see that pressure the Boxy can apply with just a little bit of extra control. Those pressure being applied to the Bristleback, not the Medusa. And yet again, I said it in the previous game, Anti-Mage was the one that was going to win NIP the game in the, uh, with his Anti-Mage. Here it's going to be the Medusa that will be able to win the game. So even though Ace was taking a lot of abuse from Taiga's Earth Spirit, he's been able to move back into the jungle. You know, I, I would be more confident in saying I agree with that if, if, if it wasn't that same position of like, well, look at the top net worths, the six of them almost side yeah, by side. Exactly. The Ember's the only one who's slightly like pulling ahead in the horse race. And Vada hasn't been moving around too much on the map. He's this has mainly been just uh, him farming creeps and moving, uh, well, he's, he's moving from lane to lane, but not to get kills, just to find farm. Yeah. And you can definitely see him just trying to itemize, like the drums are coming out in the curry at the moment, but Boxy's here to fight. Koifa's waiting for a good jump. And they know Farda shouldn't have a defensive spirit where he is while in mid. The chase underneath the tower. 33's shatter. become the new target. Everyone together. I don't know if he will shatter from... No, there, nah, there is no shatter. Yeah, it didn't connect. Mm. Yes, has moved. Uh, Timber's actually rotated over. They really want to get this kill on 33. Oh, he turned around. He'll chain forward, and that means 33. Yep, Mickey actually gets the last hit in. That moves away from the gank. They were hoping to set up on top lane. They, they wanted to kill Farda. Yeah, change of plans whenever you see these actions happening. And now, bot tower will go down. Um, they claim it without committing the mass up and what's as well. Which he does have level six available, so they can start moving around. Again, anything you can do to give this Medusa space. Because Radiant have placed this Observer Ward far earlier on, but they have not been able to see what Medusa's been up to. Either she's, you know, in the mid lane, or she's farming south of where Radiant have that Observer Ward. Mm -hmm. I always get a little concerned as well when Spence is a little bit behind to the net worth. Like, it feels like they've got a lot of great ways to, to kite him even once he has a BKB, even if, uh, like, Saksa, like, loses his life for it. Yeah, they've if, got if that. Can, if you can charge in, you got the controls from PPD. You got Stone Gaze. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of options. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, with all this farm that comes into him, like, he kind of needs more. Like, he needs the Echo, he needs the BKB, he needs a lot, but even then with BKB, it's still not enough. And even whenever he wins fights, you struggle to take objectives. That's one of the reasons why I think Wraith King has been seeing more favoritism as the go-to carry as opposed to Sven. Because, you know, if you have to pop God Strength just to win a team fight, it may time out by the time you get to an objective. Whereas Wraith King, he can use his skeletons and they'll follow him to the next objective. So Alliance do somewhat lack in the push front, but at least they have the heroes who can face tank towers. You set a Timbersaw or a Sven to just, you know, stand there and deliver, Wait. then you can eventually chip it down. They smoked underneath the Radiant Observer Ward. They were on the edge of the cliffside as well, so it's like the chance of being revealed there was pretty high. And PPD, Mass 7 wants committal. Boxy will arrive, quickly hexed up. They already started to put the needs of Goo on top of him. 33 needs to lacquer this up. 
it's Poxy. Well, he's already pretty high on armor. Oh, Amber Spirit jumping in the back lines, then looking at the Sven. He's the primary target. Stormhammer's already been thrown out. Koiper watching the back lines. Here comes your Ice Blast. It'll connect nicely over on two. 33 is one of the ones being controlled by Vermika. They still haven't finished the job on him. The Colfi keeps the, uh, the SB away from the charge forward. They've got one, it's about to be two, charge back out again, turning directions for the extra ton on the timber saw, but they still haven't got the kill. Alliance, they're barely surviving through this, but surviving is surviving. Uh, I don't think enough people were expecting that many Alliance rotations. The Serpent Wars were dropped so preemptively, I was like, it was like a dominance play. They're like, you're not going to defend this tower, I'm just going to plop down these wards. And then all of a sudden they saw these Alliance heroes materializing out of fog, starting to teleport in. They're like, maybe we can't take this fight. Spearbreaker was doing his best to cause chaos, but he wasn't landing the bashes. If he managed to get one bash on Mike, he may have been able to finish him off. But the God Strength gave him too much HP and he was able to get out. It seems also kind of crazy for NIP to have a team fight when Alliance split it up, like Koifer comes in from the right, then you got another two from below, another two from the northwest, like, and Nip just split. Like, it's, it seems very difficult uh, just to get this perfect control against Alliance and let the Quills do its work. Because when they're grouped up, 33 is going to be a lot more effective. And it's going to be harder even moving forward. Timbersaw's going to get more mana, he's going to be able to just chain all around the map, which just becomes just as slippery as a Storm Spirit with Ball Lightning, which is also on Alliance. So this is yet another approach to perhaps beating a Bristleback is you know, not necessarily ignoring him, but just running around him. Midtown gets denied up, and Saini was on it. So that's now the second tier one tower to fall, top lane. Boxy's trying to do some level of chip damage. That's the upside for NIP, the fact that these towers, like top and bottom have taken 50% damage, but they're really not great at pushing. Nope. Like Alliance, Alliance, <laughs> we, we said it in game one, right? Like uh, an issue of Alliance is the ability to push down buildings. Exactly. With their draft every time. But as we saw from NIP, they'll, they'll tap out before the buildings even get pushed. If, Boxy, if you can control them enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Boxy is just not getting controlled and the creeps are doing a lot of damage on this tier one, but it's because there's this movement. They want to see what the Storm Spirit's up to in this bot lane and Koikfa slips into the corner and he's going to get out just fine. Nighttime hits and two bounty runes will go the way of NIP, but the ones on the top half of the map as Fada. Rolling Boulder. They go in. They got the silence over on the Ember Spirit. Ice Blast will also connect. He jumps away, but he is affected by the chill and the magnetize. I think Fada's going to actually shatter at this point with the urn. He can't do anything to survive it. And Tiger gets the 757 gold for the kill. Plus, Boxy claims the tier one tower on top. Great rotation. This is how important it is to connect that Ice Blast both on the Ember Spirit or on the Bristleback is now quite good. Finds PPD on a warding mission. Yeah, we'll get the Hex out, but PPD, no way to really survive this. Another quick jump from Koifa. That's his fifth kill of the game. He's been involved in eight of the 14. With three assists, Ven may be the next primary target. Gonna put that Medallion of Courage to work going against Ven. They can find a kill. With that medallion, I'm wondering if NIP think about early Roshans with the Bristle. Yeah, exactly. They uh, Roshan hasn't been that important for either of these games, which is surprising because both these teams, like since Alliance aren't great at taking towers, you'd think that maybe they would prioritize Rosh a little bit more. And since NIP have been so good at, you know, we've, we've said time and time again, NIP are vision teams. They yep. love these heroes that give vision. So Spearbreaker being able to find picks all over the map, this uh, Fada Ember Spirit being able to move around all the map, it, kind of spreads out Alliance that they may not be able to be in a position to contest Roche, so the Medallion definitely makes a lot of sense. We'll get fresh items up. Mandasile gets to arrive in for the Dusa, while we'll have our Kaya for Koitva. Also with the casual staff of Wizardry to go into its Yule set. This is a lot of extra mana for the Storm Spirit to work with. And there's Alliance are very heavily grouped up around that Roche. And Fada stays close to where all the Alliance vision is. You know, just down on bottom. It's cool. Farm up. You're fine. And now smoke up. Let's see if they can find something on this mid lane. It's a bit of a trap, though. PPD is holding right behind A, so McKay jumps forward. I think that was a Blink Dagger reveal. Yeah, it was. One. So, not, not the best debut after getting that uh, smoke up. But so, they so where do they go next? They go towards... Uh, oh, and he just used to charge. Oh, it's I don't know if he gets out of this just one. Just a spirit breaker. It is. It's still a kill. It's still a kill. And it's more kills that Boxy is being, I mean, uh, Boxy and Koikfa. Both of these heroes are very, very snowball dependent. Boxy already having a Lotus Orb completed. So great way to discourage the Shadow Shaman from casting, you know, the Hex. 
and also really surprisingly useful against the Bristleback, being able to purge off the goo and make you less desirable to goo in the first place, because Bristleback needs his own armor. If it's getting reflected back, then, I mean, he will die to the Sven in just a couple of hits. You see what he's building into as well? It's, uh, it's going to be a Lotus Soul for the Bristleback as well. <laughs> oh no, he just changed. He was on Lotus and he's gone BKB now, so uh, I, take it, I take it all back. Got charge on the bot lane. They want to fight. Yep. Boxy's pretty close towards that tower. Fada wrapping around the side. Didn't get the searing chains off, but that's the reason why Spirit Breaker jumps in. Tiger's waiting for the right time to get in through the rear line. PBD's also on the way in. They're just waiting. This Lotus Orb of Boxy is so problematic, and now the Gold Strike hit. Ember Spirit's in trouble, and the Ice Blast! It hits so hard! He's just trying to get himself outside the Shark Room. At least he get the War Trap over on the ES. The Magnetized up, so it's still gonna be a one-for-one -one trap. It's a call for a support. As it sucks, it goes into the trees. He'll fall as well. And Alliance still have so much HP. NIP have to smoke back to get to the shrine, and Alliance are just going to farm up these wards and most likely take the bot tier one tower. Great engagement, and Insania has been on point with these ice blasts. Fada keeps jumping in, but he's he's being the initiator after the uh, spear breaker, and no one wants to use any spells on a spear breaker who's bulldozed. They're not going to last very long. Just save it for the Ember Spirit. Wrapping around the side, PPD, looking for a target. I think they want Mickey. They do not want Boxy. Ignore the Timbersaw at all costs. The charge over on the uh, Sven, so they see where he is in the trees. The vision is the best advantage right now they get from this charge. And Boxy quickly hexed up. All PB needs to do is control him, but because the Lotus reflected it, he can't do much more. He can't shackle him either. Maybe they can take out some of the mana. That's what the Mystic Snake is for. But it's too deep. They're not feeling the, the strength of NIP at all. As Alliance just back up, and now they'll efficiency shrine. Yeah, and, and uh, Sox is not a high enough level to get those light speed charges going. So he was providing vision, but was not providing control. He was just waiting for his moment. But Sven was able to retreat far enough that you started coming close to the Alliance Shrine. Tiger rolled in, so NIP just back off. Though all the while, Medusa is still staying alive. She was participating in a handful of those fights, but she has not been suffering too many deaths other than in that laning phase. Until she reaches the Scotty too, she can't offer that real kiting ability to, to lock down this Sven, or right. slow down this Sven. Because he's getting into the BKB pretty soon. Smoke maneuver from Alliance. This is not going to... Oh, actually it is. It breaks on Earth Spirit, but he thinks he's up the hill. That's not where they are. They move over towards Sven. He's already tricked off the God Strike as Koifa, the Ice Blast, is on the way into Hits Fata so hard. 33 to the run back out. He has nowhere to go, but he's got a lot of quills still being sprayed up. Ace wants to help out with the Stone Gaze, but they're just disengaging. Tiger is the only one nearby. Meanwhile, PPD dies in the upper part of the river. And Ace pops Stone Gaze as well. He thought that they were going to immediately converge on him, but they didn't go for it. They just were content <laughs> with the Bristle, the Ember, and the Shadow Shaman kill. So that's going to be down. And they this, this may be able to go for more objectives now. This really feels like the first time that NIP have been pushed to a potential loss in a series. Like, you can lose a game, yeah. sure, but they've only dropped one at the very, very beginning to Sirius. Now, bottom lane, Koifa, it's just keeping been, that momentum rolling. I think the story's just been both these mid laners, Koifa for Alliance and Fada for... I mean, even though Fada wasn't in the mid lane, this situation still that roll. He was doing so good on his Lina in game one, but Koifa's Storm Spirit has just been... In, just virtuoso performance in both game two and so far this game it seems to give uh, alliance more of a focus like it's not a it's not a question of who we're going to go on my like, quote is like I, I know who i'm going to pick yeah. off and having these supports that can sit in the back lines and cause you problems like something like uh, like a shaman for example who has a lot of hexes now ppd has been counted in two ways just because one the lotus orb the two the hunting ability that comes from Koifa. And Fada would love to have that same sort of one-two punch. You let the Spear Breaker go in, and then maybe the Ember Spirit can go in. But Alliance are being very judicious about how they're using their Disables. They're saving it exclusively for the Ember Spirit, because who really cares about the rest of them? You'll eventually kill this Bristleback. Uh, Medusa is not enough of a problem yet that you need to worry about her. Mm -hmm. You just need to slow down this Ember Spirit as much as possible. And he's falling quite uh, far, far behind, you know? Yeah. But Alliance need to keep this pressure up. They can't back off. Or else, this Dusa will reach a dangerous point. I think it's only about another 500-ish gold before she'll have her Scotty totally done. Pretty much. And like, expending your buyback for this is probably going to be the wisest thing. And since Boxy pushes so slowly, they yep. are content to just let him whack away at a tower <laughs> uncontested for a little while. Well, this, this is the one you never want to GG out of, because you're like, you know what, I think we always still yeah, have a chance, true. and you found a target, PPD. Another hero who dies on a warning mission. The sentries are just out of range of each other. 
so they'll be able to survive. And Boxy is just positioning himself up on top lane. This is actually hilarious enough. It's, it's very reminiscent of how Lodi used to play his cause. He just control the dire jungle. I'll always yeah. push it in. Yeah. But I'm tanky enough that I know I can survive. If it's a Juggernaut, I'll spin TP out. In this case, it's a Timbersaw. I load us all, but I TP out. Pretty much. And now Mike has his 10 second BKB completed. But so does the Bristleback. Mm -hmm. So both teams hitting a huge power spike right now. Charge is coming in. TP towards the front lines, do So you're well off target, and that will not complete. Oh, man. They could have gone for that. A bunch of Alliance heroes just TP top, and that's where Fata is. They don't even have vision back there. That's a defensive NIP ward behind the tower, but actually they have one that's next to the tier one tower on bottom. Yeah. But that didn't see the, the full movement in of NIP. They must just really be focused on getting a kill on Fada, or whoever wants to try and challenge Boxy for the top lane. And and do we actually beg the question now, uh, like, obviously Spirit Vessel is a big thing to pick up. Saxer is the one who's tasked for this. But is there a Silver Edge builder at all? Like, do you actually get one against the Timber Saw? Is that, is that the play? Because at the moment I'm seeing a Solar Crest and uh, Lotus Orb build up from 33 is his item choices. I don't, I don't think you're willing to go for it. I think you're just going to rely on the magic damage that the Amber brings out, and then eventually the Ace Medusa will be enough of a right-click force that she'll just penetrate the, whatever reactive armor stacks there are. It's just hilarious to watch uh, two lineups who are like, you know what, we'll just get Lotus Orbs and Spirit Vessels yeah. uh, against a Timber as well as a Bristleback. Exactly. Like late, late game, maybe we see this. Ace is on the run box. He's already committed most of his mana. He's got tw 21 charges, so with a little bit of extra control from Tiger, they would have had a chance. And uh, well, here comes Mickey in with the stun. The Ice Blast in the great back lines. He'll connect with a follow up kick. Sharp will end up shattering, but a huge Spirit committal. Is it going to be enough? Fara did everything he possibly could, but the Deucer is still down for 70 seconds. While 33 hits the air and hits the ground back running, looking towards Tiger on the tree lines. Wants to keep these cool spray stacks up. Able to do so, Tiger rolling boulders He's down. Charged. Still charged up. All the vision in the world for him. Mickey comes in for his own double stun. The clean! Oh really hitting so hard. Fada, he needs to back out of this one. It's so difficult to do, but he's got the movement speed up, down, and around. No through the rear, but it's not going to be possible. One quick whirling death and Fada will fall. I thought for sure Alliance were going to back off after they let Taiga just burrow his way deep into the jungle, but they were in hot pursuit. Immediate blink, double the cleave, just shredding through him. And Fada now, I mean, he's been set so far back that they were able to use all their disables on the Medusa at the beginning of the fight. Fada was doing all these searing chains, you know, getting a fair amount of magic damage. But they didn't need to prioritize him that much as so we look in this replay. Yep. All the disables are just being peppered into the Medusa. And again, these Ice Blasts. Like, Fada comes in, triple remnant, a lot of damage. But that's also his escape path as they chase down Taiga and Sven just waiting for his moment. Uh, it really shows you how much how much damage can come out from Alliance, just directed towards heroes mainly. Mm -hmm. Like. They can continue to take these fights after fight. PPD also continues to be a non-factor. He's getting hit by Ice Blast almost every single engagement. And he can't avoid it. The Ice Blast was actually coming for the back line. It wasn't even on the front line. It wasn't even on the main heroes that they probably wanted to hit. But it removes the disable. Though for having a 10k net worth advantage, it's definitely not a 10k net worth of map control. Mm -hmm. As 33 and the rest of NIP will continue crossing the river. And the Medusa doesn't feel exceptionally pressured. Like, she obviously died in that fight, but she was in the Radiant jungle for that. Yep. NIP are protecting her whenever necessary, but if they want to take fights, they need to farm up a few more items. Well, they got one of the critical ones. So Saxer has managed to complete up the Spirit Vessel. So they have some level of an answer to the Timber. Mm -hmm. um, I say some level, it's not guaranteed, especially as he's just about to finish up an entire Shiva's Guard on the Timber Saw. Yep, Boxy Timber. Yeah, he just needs to wait for the, uh, actually, they bring it out to him. I thought I saw him buy it, but uh, the courier is still dead for the moment. Maybe it's actually dead on the courier, because he's already- Yeah, the courier did die. It was uh, it was right before that Medusa died that the Radiant Courier ended up going down. Yeah, I just don't know if it had the Shiva's recipe on it or not. But uh, either way, it'll be up in 30 seconds and I can have a look. Oh yeah, it does, yeah. So that's what Timbersaw's waiting on right now. Mm -hmm. He's got some good clearance and I'm, Interested to see how NIP want to try and fight him. Right now, they're not fighting anyone. Mass Open wants to be committed by PBD again. The Tier 2 tower on bottom lane. Tiger cannot defend this, so this will be a dead Tier 2. It's uh, a little bit more map control for NIP. 
As they're actually the team to claim the first tier two tower, still three towers apiece. Yeah, exactly. Which is, I mean, they have the net worth disadvantage, and PPD feels confident just dropping Serpent Wards. For what it's worth, the Serpent Wards are not that useful in a team fight. You're giving Timbersaw more reactive armor stacks. Sven with his War Cry is just going to be able to absorb a great deal of it. And Storm Spirit is too mobile to really, like, your Serpent Wards will be like halfway through their attack animation, and he's going to ball lightning somewhere else. And now a Daedalus completed on this Sven. Oh boy. With the Echo Saber, that's two quick heavy swings. Yep. Not to mention, like, he's up with the levels. Level 22 on Sven. Wow, that is crazy, actually. Yeah, two two levels actually ahead of Koitva, wow. who's been involved in, like, he hasn't died yet. He's 709. It's a 519 Sven. They've both been so heavily involved in fights, and now they're both going to just take Roshan together. Everyone else is running patrol. And the tier two tower has already been claimed at the bot lane, so NIP are just looking for someone who may have been down there after they thought maybe PPD left, but they're taking Roche, and they're not going to be able to come back to contest this in time. So Aegis the Immortal, do you give it to the fresh Daedalus? I, I mean, or do you actually give it to the Suicidal Storm? Yeah, because Sven Storm's with, opening up Sven with Aegis is never a good plan. Like, you use God Strength on which life, you <laughs> use BKB on which life. Yeah, and having multiple storms makes a lot more sense. For sure. So we've got uh, Boxy ready to be the frontline tank. Holy Whoa. Locket, Whoa, Shiva's is, what Guard, is this and Lotus Orb. item that I see? I don't know. No one buys I've this item. I've never seen this item before. <laughs> New item? <laughs> Holy Locket. One of, so Timbersaw is one of the few heroes that it is very, very viable on. Um, I, I think a lot of people initially thought that maybe like Necro would be okay. But it's never built on people who use heals on other people. It's mainly on heroes who heal themselves. So it's great, and it will be somewhat of a mitigating force if he gets Spirit Vessel and does not have that Lotus Orb to purge it off. And bottom lane, PBD is just keeping Alliance looking behind them, putting down the wards. There's the Yule Scepter. This one's Koifers once again jumping around. He doesn't want Sharvan to get any kind of Hex or Control. Doesn't care about bowing. The mana just cares about getting the Bloodstone charge. Mm -hmm. And he gets a fair amount of tier 3 damage, so again, like if your Serpent Wards are not useful in a team fight, then use them to draw the enemy around the map. Use them to get some free, unhealable damage. Yep. I, if you can kill off that, like, if you can actually kill off the tier 3 tower with shady moves like this. I would not put it past him. Yeah. I wasn't a PPD, so I was like, hey, what, what do you do? AUI, go to the side lane and keep pushing from ah, the yes. trees with, with, with the Lina. Like, just keep adding the side lane pressure. That's how we drag the game out always, and Ace needs that time to build up as well. Like, he needs to complete up the butterfly. He's close to it, 400 gold away. But he doesn't have buyback, he's short of it. So if Ace does die here, he's down for the count. And they're all surrounding him. Spirit Break is nearby. There's your jump forward. Instantly going in with the Ice Blast. It's all going to connect. And that's one very dead Dusa. 80 seconds on the sideline. And 33 has to BKB to TP away to safety. Spirit Breaker will not be so lucky. Thuxa tries to charge his way out through three Vortexes. The Ancient Apparition brings him down. And if you wanted a ticket to move up, You've got one. If you wanted to take it to Epicenter, I think you're about to get one. Alliance are just taking so heavy control of this game. Ace is the last remaining solution for NIP. Granted, Fada is not working his way back into the game. He's completed a BKB. He's working his way to an Aghanim Scepter. Oh, Koifa, long jump! Woo! He almost just one hit down PPD. He'll still kill him. And he'll still get 18 Bloodstone charges out of it as the rest of his team starts to siege tier three high ground. Yep. McKay. All the damage in the world, 33 is at least able to stack up a couple of cool sprays. At this point, it's all but confirmed that Medusa does not have buyback, because you are not willing to let Tier 3 go down this early yep. on. I like how Boxy's also tanking the Tier 4 towers. He's Free built... reactive armor. Yeah, it is. And he doesn't take any damage from this, really. And now the Tier 3 tower is gone. They'll take the racks as well, focus on the melee. Yes. 14 seconds still do so, and they'll finish the job. 80 HP regen per second with this holy <laughs> lock. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know how you get damage through this. They take the melee, they'll finish up the range, and now it's about the time for Alliance to back up. Yeah, there's nothing else to claim, as the Tier 2 towers are still standing in the top and bot lane. And they know there's still the uh, Bounty Rune as well on the top. Yeah. Because that, that's where Koifer jumped from. He jumped from the Dire Bounty Rune all the way to the Tier 2 tower. And is that an Aghanim Scepter now done for Insania? I think they'll just sit, they'll just park themselves in this lane because they've got still a minute and a half left on the Aegis. Sven has God Strength available, and they have this Aghanim Scepter on the AA as well, so... I think you want to continue brawling. Uh, and what does NIP do? Like, how do they, like, do you, like, Ace can buy the butterfly now. So this is his upside, but is this even enough? It's not. Because like, he's going to expend his buyback for it. I think you're, you're kind of like backed into a corner and they're coming. They're coming again. Smoke up from Alliance. Like, if we can battle at the same point, let's do it. 
PPD knows probably that Mass Serpent will push into the tier 3 tower on bottom is a nice little choice for him, but I think Alliance know exactly the same thing. Oh, they wrap around Ace. the back and they found Ace as the primary target. Boxy's already loaded all up, so Ace knows he can't do anything about it. Rolling Boulder in, looking for the target, the Stormfall, the cleave damage, operated by the BKB and the Ice Blast will also fly and connect. This one's from Alliance with a big Aghanim's upgrade. That's another 80 seconds down. And 33 again has to BKB TP away to safety and lose three of his own teammates. They're B teams at the top lane. They know where they need to push. They want to finish this as quickly as possible. And Cloud is going to try his best to push out the lane, but you don't. You don't beat that. You don't beat that. And there's still a siege creep in this top lane who's going to be able to shut down backdoor protection. Whole bunch of radiant vision inside the dire jungle. So if anyone wants to go for a cheeky buyback in the shrine, which there is no shrine actually, mm -hmm. so NIP are just going to have to sit there and take it. 50 seconds without the Medusa. Yeah, there's gonna be another lane of racks. 21k net worth of damage. Insanius waiting, the Ice Blast is ready to pop, and 33's caught too far out. The mid lane, Koifer jumps once again. 33 says he's sorry instantly, and they go in further. Fada, you can jump back, but look at Koifer. He saw where the spirit was. He jumped in deeper. He wanted to keep the fight going, but he didn't have Hilarious enough. The mana, now he does is the Aegis is timed Kill out, me, and he's back up to full. He's gonna take the second lane of Rack. Still can't go for Megas. Boxy is attacking the tier four towers. <laughs> He's just literally standing there by himself, <laughs> attacking the tier four towers. Like, okay, guys, I'm gonna TP back down to bottom lane, push the wave out a little bit more. Yeah, that may be the more productive thing to do. <laughs> but he can BT back to the front lines if something does happen too. Like, like this is that cool thing of just chaining your, your TP scroll and your boots to travel. Although the Aegis is now down for Storm, so I wouldn't want them to go a little bit too crazy. The only reason I was so eager for them to fight previously is because, you know, if you have that Aegis on the Storm Spirit, then just try to throw it away. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, there is there is definitely... Any any Alliance fan knows that there's potential for them to throw this game. <laughs> Doesn't matter oh, how high the network go. advantage Come is. On. It, Come on. It, believe me, I've been burned many a time. I just, I've, I'm, I've casted I'm so many low to Alliance don't, games. Don't, don't jinx them, man. Don't jinx, jinx them. I'm not jinx it. I'm like, just being you know, you pragmatic say, about like, it. Like every time you make a jinx, Arteezy ends up on a cliff. <laughs> don't do it, man. Don't do it. No, we just want to see good Dota and, and not uh, and not that. Game's in the bag. Quickfa has got Bloodstone charges oh. out the ass. That's 25k net worth that's advantage. An interesting place for Fada to TP into. They saw that. <laughs> like he, he's underneath Observer and Sentry. He's using it. his Aghanim Scepter to move around. And now they smoke. And they're pinging out. Are they thinking about... Roshan doesn't respawn for a minute and a half. And that's as a... Like the earliest time he can spawn. It's time for Bounty Runes. But the, Boxy's not going to go too crazy about it. They're going to try and hunt on top. Oh, he is going to go crazy. Oh, yeah. He's coming. He's, oh, he's, he's tethering in. Hex. They're going to shackle him up straight away. Boxy, he actually got the oh, root. The Hit your eyes, Blast! Oh, it hits so, so hard and sweet. NIP. That's not what they wanted. Another buyback charge. Have, I mean, another yeah, another buyback on the Spear Breaker. BKB charge being spent on 33. A five hero oh. Ice Blast. This Timbersaw has no fear. What a quick timing on the Lotus Orb as well. Even picked up the Bounty Rune just to rub the salt in the wound. Oh, PPD knows all about those type of Ice Blasts. Everyone grouped <laughs> together and getting hit. But uh, well, that was bad, but Dead. it wasn't a disaster. Sure, I'll give them that. Mm. They're still in the game. Only disasters to take you out of the game. So Ace still hanging on for dear life with Medusa. <laughs> it's like I just need more. I need more. May as well sell the Wraith Band. Pick up. Pick up the Mithril Hammer. Get some extra damage into you. Just. I mean, we're in rapier territory now for this Medusa. He still needs the BKB to fight. Oh, yeah, like, no. He's like got you can't, a lot to do. You can't do anything without that immunity, especially now a Bloodthorn is completed on Koitfa. He's at 24 Bloodstone charges. 65, 65 mana, regen. mana regen. Sure. Good lord. And everything's just that little bit cheaper. Thanks, Kaya. Uh, he's actually going for Shiva's Guard as his next item. Never-ending detection. Boxy's got a gem coming on the Courier. It's not like he's got enough money as it is. He's looking at a heart as his next item. You'd think a Timbersaw would have enough of a regeneration, You'd right? You'd think so, right? But he went for the cooldown reduction, not I'm actually the extra strength. Very amused to see what out of combat heart regen plus a locket is. <laughs> well, I'm hearing an SB charge. That's uh, down to the bottom lane and uh, very quickly turning around. It's, uh, I think we should go into the Bay of Eels. No, wait, hang on, I hate Eels. Let's, let's return. 
they're just paralyzed in their base right now. NIP have no semblance of map control. They have one Observer Ward, but it's just peeking out at the top of the Roshan pit. They have to push out the lanes, however. Like, if they don't do that, there's no way they can contest Roshan. And yeah. if Alliance get Roshan, this game feels very firmly shoved in the bag. But even Fada with an Aghanim Scepter, he's the best to do it, to push out these lanes. But you see how scared he is once this Bloodthorn... I, I don't know if Storm Spirit has shown that he has the Bloodthorn, but he had the Orchid anyway. And this Ember Spirit is just terrified of showing himself on the map. Coif is going to reveal it in a second. He's under the Dire Observer Ward now. Yeah. So if anyone's clicking, they don't have much more to do inside the base. No, so they, <laughs> they may as well be looking for the one Observer Ward they have outside Storm the base. Storm Spirit has Bloodthorn. Uh-huh. Interesting. Thanks, guys. Radiant Courier is going to park itself over the pit. They're just going to wait until the next rush, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, 57 seconds. When you're one game, like you're just going to close this game out. You're 31,000 gold ahead. You're about 35 to 40. Actually, you're 40,000 experience ahead. All I'm saying is Alliance. Oh, hello, Foxy. He breaks the smoke. They were coming out. They know that Roshan could have spawned up. He is going to spawn in 40 seconds time, 33. Looking for a target, but does Alliance want to even take this fight? They don't have a lot of buybacks. AA and Timber are the only ones with buybacks. Storm short by 44. So he'll probably gain in the fight. Now, here's your jump in. Mickey instantly. They just want this. Dudes are dead, and they're going to get it. Ace is so low on life. He's already down. Buybacks are coming in thick and fast. NIP, they need to get a good fight out of this. But right now, they're just losing everything. Two heroes on the sideline. Storm Spirit's 25 as well, just dropping remnants all over the place. <laughs> Medusa buys back, Shaman buys back, but they have no shrine to go GG. to. They, they GG. They out. It. Alliance are going to Epicenter. That they are. They have qualified through NIP. Admit defeat in both Game 2 and Game 3 in the same method. It's like, you know what? We just cannot keep up with Alliance. A terrific performance by Alliance to come in here and take a series against a team who hasn't dropped a single one. They had their run through. It was a 2-1 a in their first round against Sirius. Then NIP were able to 2-0 Maneski, but they were unable to get through the rest of it. And this has been a brutal season for Alliance. Being in Europe, having to finally beat a European a team that's been superior to you in qualifiers and PPC points. Ever since OG came back into form, all of a sudden, the scene became that much tighter in that region. And finally, they are getting a chance to go to a major and potentially dethrone Ehome. Ehome are yep. now sweating bullets right now. <laughs> yeah, they really should be. Alliance, they're on 369. Uh, that was before this game was played points. So this will push them up a little bit further, and they're going to be looking to try and get a little bit more to get into that top 12. Secure a position, have Alliance return to the main arena. And even if, they, TI. even if they don't manage to do that well at Epicenter, it's still a lot of practice against top-tier teams yep. at an international land right before the European qualifiers would start. So mm -hmm. already they have managed to get themselves such a great boon moving forward into TI. And you're feeling the uh, the return of Koifer as well. Like oh, his, hell yeah. His presence in the mid lane, Madara was their big stand-in, but Koifer's come back into the team and said, you know what, I still can play Dota. Don't doubt me. Give me my heroes I can initiate on. Give me the ones I can dominate on. And they're just comboing so nicely together across the entire Alliance team. And this ES pickup that PPD has let through multiple times really shows Alliance's ability to move between their lanes and have these proper signature heroes that are meant to be respected. I mean, during these drafts, we were putting so much focus on what is 33 going to be doing? What are, what are these bands targeted towards? Are you going to take his yeah. Bristleback? Are you going to get breaks? Are you going to take his Night Stalker? Meanwhile, Koifa Storm Spirit just quietly slips through. Earth Spirit mm -hmm. from Taiga quietly slips through, mm -hmm. brings them a victory. Yeah, it's uh, a terrific performance from uh, from Alliance. A well-deserved victory, 2-1. Of course, they're not done yet. You still pu play for one seating at uh, the next DPC event, as well as the big prize some money. Some cash is money? Yeah, there's, there's, there's some decent cash money decent here cash for, money. for the miner. Like, there's not that many of them, so you got to win them when they're there. And Alliance will get to battle for that tomorrow in the grand final, as NIP will have the harder road through the lower part. And we've got more games. We're not done yet. Stick around. One more series today.
doing something where I felt like I would actually push the whole craft forward. I could give people something that they would enjoy.